like to state that no brainies or insects were harmed in the making of this program, and that none of the training you're about to see be attempted unless under expert supervision. Eight brainies, one challenge. To use complex mass of 100 billion cells we call brain for chance to win Brain Jitsu Black Brain Belt. This is Brain Jitsu. Born in Lancashire, trained in Japan, with mind as sharp as samurai sword, he is Brain Master. He is the Sensei. Konnichiwa, and welcome to Brain Jitsu. Mental training specially designed to boost brain power and focus. My trainees, or brainies, have been following a basic program of training in the comfort of their own home. A brain boosting routine of exercise, sleep, and enough fruit and veg to stock a greengrocer's. I'm a fight for the black belt, but I'm not really competitive. I just like having a good time. I don't expect I'm going to win, but it sounds like it's going to be quite fun. I'm really competitive. I want to win that black belt. Now my brainies must put their training into practice by testing a part of their brain we use every day. Level one. Yellow yeah, vault! Take a look at this crowd of people. Can you spot the woman in the red jumper? Spotted, eh? Congratulations. You've just used your occipital lobes. This area, the seeing part of our brain, allows us to recognise and separate images from each other. The seven brainies who use their occipital lobes the best will be allowed to enter my brain jitsu dojo, where their training will continue. The one who fails will be left outside. Oh, feel the burn. Enter the dojo! Brainies must first answer four questions by counting the different shapes on the board in front of them. Get the questions right and they'll be left with a four-digit code, which they must then use to unlock a piece of brain and secure their place in the dojo. But with only seven pieces of brain and eight brainies, one of either Quabina, Hannah, Matthew, Katie, Hugo, Alice, Alfie or Frederick will be left outside and eliminated. The tension in the noodle bar is rising higher than Mount Fuji as the four questions are revealed. How many large circles are there? How many non-white squares are there? How many non-black rectangles are there? How many three-sided white shapes are there? The answer our brainies are looking for is 2439. Quabina is first to reach a piece of brain, but has he got the code right? Soon there's one brainy to each piece of brain, but Hugo is still working at the answer and he looks panicked already. The key to this task is to stay calm, ignore the others around you and focus only on getting the right answer. Katie and Alfie have both claimed their place in the dojo, while Hugo still hasn't had a first crack at the code. Don't forget the code our brainies are looking for is 2439, as there are two large circles, four non-white squares, three non-black rectangles and nine three-sided white shapes. Is Frederick trying to massage his occipital lobe so they work better? I've never seen that tactic before. Hugo finally has his first try, but it's the wrong answer. But Quabina and Frederick have both got it. Maybe Frederick's occipital lobe massage helped. That correct code one more time is 2439. Matthew and Alice finish, leaving the two H's, Hugo and Hannah, to fight it out for the last place in the dojo. But it's all over before the fat sumo sings. Hannah's in and Hugo is out. So, as seven enter the dojo for a chance to survive six more gruelling levels of brain training, for Hugo, the dream of the black belt has ended before it even started.
I think the key to winning brain jitsu is taking things slowly and concentrating more. I think Katie's a likely contender for the black belt because she reads things slowly and concentrates. So with six levels to go, Katie, Alfie, Wobina, Frederick, Matthew, Alice and Hannah have entered the dojo and achieved the first of their coloured brain belts. Seeing how, how quickly I managed to do that one, I'm hoping that I'll be able to do it as well in all the other challenges. I was scared because I kept thinking that I was going to get the numbers wrong. I'm a really competitive boy, so yeah, I really want that black belt. In this next level of training, things are going to get really hard. Level two, orange belt. To do things every day without even thinking, like brushing your teeth. But, haha, you try brushing them using the hand you wouldn't normally use. See how you get on. If you manage to do that, you're using part of your brain that deals with problem solving, the frontal lobes. And that's what level two is all about. Taking something you normally do without thinking and doing it differently. Work it. To prepare them for using their frontal lobes in the next challenge, my brainies are going to need some training. The Room of Mental Nourishment. The Room of Mental Nourishment is where our young hopefuls will train their brains in between challenges. The more serious our brainies take the training, the better prepared they'll be. And in level two, the challenge is all about getting their brains to think in a new way. One brainy swings the pendulum. The other tries to catch it, blindfolded. This exercise makes our brainies work their frontal lobes, as they have to really think about judging time and space, something you wouldn't normally think about at all. Oh, you got it. Alice and Katie are taking the training very seriously, but the boys aren't quite so focused. Try not to kill each other. No, 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 no. destroyed the room now. It doesn't matter. The room of mental nourishment has descended into chaos. Training tip time. Repeat a word in your head in time with the pendulum. Right? Now, no pillow fighting this time. Yes, ma'am. If you want to work your frontal lobes at home, why not do some kitchen counting? See if you can count to three minutes for the perfect soft-boiled egg. It may sound silly, but it will help improve your all-round focus. It really works! Katie and Alice are still concentrating hard. But all the boys still seem to be either mucking about or cheating. Africa. Africa! <laughs> They're concentrating a lot better now they're not having a pillow fight. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you who put you in charge? I'm not in charge, I just... You're just naturally bossy. That isn't nice! Well, it was kind of clobber now you started the pillow fight, but I think I got a bit, uh, all of us got a bit carried away during it. If you're trying to do the pendulum thing, it's not really appropriate to be having a pillow fight. I can be as focused as I like and I can be as um, playful as I like. We've improved our coordination while they were having, <laughs> while they were having a pillow fight, so... We've got the yeah. other hand now. So, concentrated Katie took the training very seriously. Will it help her to get first place two challenges in a row? Fun-loving Quabina was the ringleader in the pillow fight, but all the boys messed about. Will one of them miss out on their orange brain belt? There's only one way to find out. It's time for our brainies to put their training to the test. Guardian of the dojo and task adjudicator the Sheehan will now demonstrate the level two challenge. Brainies are all given a time, say 12 seconds. They must then squat down inside the box as soon as Sheehan bang on. Start counting. Then, when they think time is up, must jump out of a box. Brainy or brainies closest to target time will go through to next level. Brainies continue like this until only one remain and is eliminated from dojo. My brainies must remember to control their breathing. The quicker they breathe, the faster they'll count. Work those frontal lobes. For the first round, our brainies have to count to 22 seconds. If you want to play along at home and give your frontal lobes a workout, shut your eyes on the gong, start counting up to 22, then open them when you think the time is up. To make this even harder, the Sheehan is banging about on a bucket. 
In the dark confines of their boxes with no point of reference, our brainies really have to focus on thinking about time passing in a totally new way. Will they remember their training and use a word to help get the rhythm? Hey, where's Frederick? Hello, Fred? Finally! Has he got it right? And how near were you to that 22 seconds? Well, if you opened your eyes when Quabina, Matthew and Katie popped up, then congratulations, because they were all closest to the 22 seconds, and they go through. Fun-loving Quabina was the ringleader of the boys' pillow fight, but he obviously found his focus in the box. Next time in 14 seconds. Why not close your eyes and count again yourself when the gong sounds? It's just Alfie, Frederick, Alice and Hannah currently counting to win their place in the next level of the dojo. Will Fred remember his pendulum training this time? He's done it again! Maybe Fred should have concentrated on the training and not joined in with the pillow fight. With only three orange brain belts left, who was closest to the 14 seconds? If you agreed with Alice and Hannah's timing, then you would have also gone through to the next level. And Katie couldn't be happier that the girls are through. So either Alfie or Frederick will be out of the dojo. Final round, 29 seconds. Close your eyes if you want to play at home. Will Fred find his focus in this round, or will Alfie take that final orange brain belt? Frederick actually before Alfie there, who would have thought it? But which brainy was closest to the 29 seconds? <laughs> Leaping salmon sashimi. At the last minute, Fred has pulled it out of the bag, or rather, the box. He's in and Alfie's out. Walk of eternal regret. I think um, nerves took over my brain because I probably could have passed that task if I was thinking, probably. I think either Quabana or Katie will win the black belt because they've come from either third, second or first place in all the rounds. With five levels left, only Katie, Quabana, Frederick, Matthew, Alice and Hannah have gained their orange brain belts. Because I had a bit of a laugh in the training room, I was able to focus even better. I thought that the training really, really helped me because it told you to use a word to count the swing. And I use the same word that I use in training. I use Mississippi. In training, we had a pillow fight and it was fun. And then we went to the uh, task and it, my heart sank. Brainy. Who's the clever clogs and whose brain needs a lot more training? Money, Dosh, Wonga, Moolah makes the world go round. Or is that love? Anyway, see this geezer with a beard, Mr Richard Branson. He set up his first business at the tender age of 16 and has since cashed in an estimated £4 billion, which he uses to fund some unusual hobbies, like breaking world records in hot air balloons and building rockets to send people into space. Kerching! Right, off to the USA now, and someone who's not quite so clever with the cash. A bloke in his mid-thirties walks into a shop, buys some grub and pays the cashier. Sounds pretty run of the mill, except for one thing. He only goes and tries to pay with a million dollar note. What a wonga wally. Brainy Richard Branson. Not so brainy, million dollar note nitwit. Russia in Brain Jitsu Dojo rising! Now, just six young hopeful remain to compete under watchful eye of Jihan. Matthew did well in last round. Fun loving Kobina. I think starting the filler facts and having a bit of a laugh was okay because I was able to focus in the box. Alice, midway both round. Concentrated Katie. 
I'm a little bit shocked that Quabana didn't pay attention in the training, yet he still came first. Hannah, nearly out in first round, but improved after training. And Frederick. Oh, I'm glad I'm going into the next round. Challenges about to get even tougher. Only two Brady will make it through to final test. Table of Supreme Focus. Where must move ball with power of mind. For chance to win, Bren Jitsu Black Bren Belt. It's time for level three. With that. Now, we all like to chat, but did you know that using words to communicate is one of the main reasons why our brains have grown so incredibly powerful? And that having a conversation exercises both halves of the brain. Now, if all that's doing your head in, <laughs> allow me to explain. Think of it like a football match. A player is focused on his own performance, but the manager, he has to think about all his players. That's it, Alex, all the way. It's the same with the brain. There's the left half, which deals with the details, and there's the right half, which looks at the overall picture. This next level of training strengthens my brainies focus by working one half of their brain under pressure. Hey, pump it up. The Room of Mental Nourishment. Yeah! It's our second visit to the Room of Mental Nourishment. Brainies have a choice as to whether they take part or not, but any extra training they do will help them with the next challenge. For level three, it's communication. Brain training. Get into two groups. One group disguises the picture in front of them. The other draws it. So, our brainies are in two groups. One group should use the right side of their brain to describe clearly how to draw the picture. The other team should use the left side of their brains to concentrate on interpreting those instructions to draw the same picture. A and B, there's a line that goes vertically. Was it between when? one and two or two and three? One and two. Now I want you to join that up in an oval shape. Can you well, do that? Okay, Hannah, you do that. The boys are pretty clear and the girls are following them fairly well. Uh, OK. Well, there are now two squares to outline. Um, the square D3. Matthew is being meticulous with his instructions. Outline them. And you put five lines in the, in the two squares you've circled vertically across. And factual Frederick is being very precise. No, 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 horizontal. Training tip time. Use short, clear instructions. Imagine yourself hearing them. Okay. We've got two squares. In between D3 and D4. Yeah, we've yeah. done that, we've done yeah. that. Okay. Meticulous Matthew is still doing well. In between... No, um, no, no. Half Let them draw, I want to draw a line. From the, the square on your left to, to the oval. Exactly through the middle. Between. But fun loving Quabina seems to have lost it. The tip is supposed yeah. to help, not Try hinder. The key to this task is to communicate clearly with short instructions. Talk one at a time and listen to each other. You must work as a team, after all. You might be on the other side of the fence in the next challenge. Yeah. Try and get that as close as possible from, from, the, from your square yeah. on your left. Put, put a line. In spite of Quabina's confusing instructions, the girls have listened well, and the end result isn't half bad. Go on then, show us. Okay. Um, it's it, okay. It, it does, however, have the basic shape of what, we, yeah. of what we've got here, okay. but they follow the basic instructions. The words and instructions were okay, but sometimes it was hard to understand what they were saying. When we were, like, halfway through drawing, they changed their instruction, and, yeah. and so we'd already put the mark on the page, as you can see from the black dot that we've had to scribble out. If the task is against the clock, then yes, a tip will be helpful. But if it's not, I tend to like giving long and detailed instructions, so it probably won't help me. Quabina's instructions got more confused after the tip. And factual Frederick's detailed nature means he thinks he might struggle against the clock. Meticulous Matthew was very clear with his instructions. And the girls all listened well. But who'll use their communication training to get their green belt? Let's find out. Barrel tip, do maths quick. This level tests how well our brainies can communicate. So, our sticks need to be in teams of two. The chopsticks will decide the pairs. So, we have Quabina and Alice, Katie and Matthew, and Frederick and Hannah. That's one talker and one listener per team from the training. 
quickly as possible. Team must tip over six barrels, containing number that go together to make some. Pairs need to decide who is guider, who is tipper. As tippers will be blindfolded, they will be relying on guider to help them find barrel. Once all six have been tipped, trainees stop clock by shouting, Rinjitsu! Quicker they up end barrels, more time to pick up number and make some. When Brainy happy with answer, hit gong! First two teams to work out correct answer will get green belt and advance to next level. One Brainy from losing team will be eliminated. The key to success here is for the guider to use the right side of their brain to follow their teammates' progress and give them clear instructions. For their partner, it's vital they use the left side of their brain to focus on these instructions and nothing else. First to put their communication training to the test are fun-loving Quabina and Alice. And the left hand up. Oh. Um, left, right hand up then. Quabina's instructions were a little confused in the training and the same seems true here. Left. Just keep, yeah, tip. Wobbinet must remember his training and use the right side of his brain to give short, clear instructions. Bring it forwards, backwards, backwards, backwards. Make your mind up, Wobbinet. Bring your hand backwards, straight to the... The key to good communication is to stay calm and be precise, but Wobbinet is getting frustrated and it's slowing them down. Forward, straight forward. Oh, God. <laughs> where, where are you going? T backwards, <laughs> backwards, tip. Tip. There you go, tip. Brain jitsu. They're finished, but with a time of 3 minutes and 13 seconds, it's not looking good. Now, Matthew and Katie. Katie, go forward. Left. No, right, sorry, right, right, move right. OK, back. Matthew back. talked and Katie right, listened uh, right in the training and they've gone for the same combo here. You got it. Tip. Meticulous Matthew's short but detailed instructions mean concentrated Katie tips the first barrel straight away. Forward. Um, left hand up. Tip. Matthew and Katie both did well in the training and the good team work continues as they quickly make their way through the barrels. Brangitsu! They finished with a time of 1 minute and 59 seconds. Well done. High five, thanks. Just take one step forward. In the training, Factual Freddy was worried about going up against the clock as his detailed nature means he likes to give long instructions. More to the right. Grab it. Tip. But it seems he's really taken the tip on board. His instructions are short and clear, and Hannah is following them very well. Got it. Feel it. Tip. 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 Brenjitsu. They've finished already, and with a time of 1 minute 46 seconds, Hannah and Frederick are the first to collect their numbers. These are the numbers our teams are looking for. See if you can work out the answer. Quabina and Alice are last back with their numbers, while the other two teams have already started working out the sum. Quabina and Alice were the last to gong. And all three teams have got a different answer. Hey, but who's right? Nine divided by three times five equals 15. Nine times five divided by three equals 15. 9 times 3 divided by 5 actually equals 5.4, which means that Quabiner and Alice now face each other in the... Stare off! With just one green belt up for grabs, both brainies must use all their powers of focus to fight the urge to blink. The first to falter will be eliminated. Oh, that's it. Alice has blinked and it's all over. Fun-loving Quabina is in and Alice is out. Walk of eternal regret. Well, I feel quite upset, but I'm proud of what I've done. But I'm glad I had the experience. So with four levels left, it's green brain belts for Katie, Quabina, Frederick, Matthew and Hannah. I knew I needed the training. I concentrated and it helped me greatly. Frederick said he wanted to do long sentences, but he done short ones, which were easy to understand. Brain Jitsu! Level 4. Revolt! 
this fourth level, requires our brainies to master a primitive part of the brain called the amygdala, the area that responds to threat. <coughs> oh, oh, oh. Remember the last time you felt afraid or panicky? Maybe you'd just seen a spider. Uh, well, that feeling was triggered by the old amygdala. Now, stress can make you lose focus. Fact. Which is why my brainies must train to keep their emotions under control. Prepare to harness the power of the mind. The Room of Mental Nourishment. We're back in the room of mental nourishment and it's time for our five remaining green belt holders to overcome fear and stay totally focused. Form a circle. Pass a disgusting drink around the circle, only passing it on when you have said a different animal. After one minute, the brainy holding the drink has to drink it. And today's drink is cod liver oil. OK, I'll go first. A real animal. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a real monkey. Yeah, it's a male monkey. It's a golden monkey. I can't really remember where it came from. Factual Frederick really knows his animal facts. Dog. This group seems to have made up their own smelling rule, and Quabina really doesn't fancy it. Um, um a chimpanzee. <laughs> the gong means that the minute's up, and Hannah's the unlucky brainy. They've all done pretty well, but well, here's a training tip. Tip. Welcome the drink as your friend. It holds the answer. Banded lima. Another great animal for factual Fred. Ant. Anteater. Hedgehog. Lima. Just rough lima. Rough lima. Uh, yeah, no. Rough lima. Yeah, but that's too That's similar. that's too okay, similar. Ant. Ant. I said anteater. Bush baby. That's not close. That's good, ain't <laughs> Cat. Said it. Said it. Okay, He's um, there. um, what's it called? Aardvark. With a whole world of animals to choose from, it seems the fear of the drink might be causing our brainies to repeat creatures they've already heard. Who had that? Matthew or Quabana? I got it to know, I got it to just before he said gong. Uh, and no, I'm, I'm telling you, no, no, it was him. Why don't both of you drink it then? <laughs> That was probably the vilest thing I've ever tasted. I know loads and loads of animals, so I could probably do it very quickly. So, factual Frederick wasn't phased by the drink. And in fact, all our brainies did pretty well. Although I've never seen such a bunch of drama kings and queens in my life. But who'll be taking the walk of eternal regret? There's only one way to find out, as our five must now put their brain training to the test. Creepy crawdy word grab. This level real test of mind over matter for brainies and will push them to really overcome their fear. Underneath the creepy crawlies lie an assortment of letters worth different points. Brainies have just one minute to plunge hands into tank and pick out up to seven letters each. They then have a further minute to make higher scoring word they can. To do well, my brainies must block out the signals coming from their amygdala and ignore the creepy crawlies. The quicker they combat their fear, the more time they'll have to pick out the high-scoring letters. <coughs> Underneath the cockroaches are an extra five golden letters. If our brainies manage to use one in their word, they'll double their score. The gong goes and most of our brainies get stuck in. But Hannah's not happy. She must override her amygdala and get some letters or she'll be out. Fun-loving Quabiner was pretty overdramatic in the training and he's doing nothing to disguise his disgust here. Factual Frederick taking the cockroaches in his stride. The gong means that their minute is up and now our brainies have another minute to make the longest word they can out of the letters they've collected. Concentrated Katie has overcome her fear to pick out the maximum seven letters, but can she use that gold one to double her points? See if you can make a word from the anagram on the screen now.
So, how have our green belt holders fared? Yawn. Concentrated Katie was obviously wide awake. She's got a massive 20 points. Paul. It won't get in pole position, but will six points be enough to get in the blue? Cope. Factual Frederick coped well with the cockroaches and gets eight points. Vet. A golden letter means ten points for Matthew. Quabiner's place in the dojo all hangs on Hannah's score. Toy. Six points as well, which means that Katie, Frederick and Matthew are in, but Hannah and Quabiner have to battle it out for the final blue brain belt in the... Tiebreak Chopstick Challenge! It's tough but fair. Our brainies have just five seconds to engage their occipital lobes, the seeing part of the brain, and quickly work out how many chopsticks they see. Time to reveal the brainies' answers. 50. 62. The actual number is... So, fun-loving Quabiner's answer of 50 was furthest from the correct answer of 93 chopsticks. So, Hannah's in and he's out. Walk of eternal regret. I think the brain training did help a little bit, but it just didn't help with the cock, which is because there were too many of them. So with only three levels to go, Katie, Frederick, Matthew and Hannah proudly wear their blue brain belts. I'm really, really glad to be through. The tip from the brain training and thinking of the nasty thing as your friend did help. When I saw the cockroaches, I was scared because um, everyone else put their hands in first, but then I didn't put my one in, and I was really scared that I was going to lose. Brain jitter! Brainy, not so brainy. Who's the clever clogs and whose brain needs a lot more training? Bridges, aren't they brilliant? Well, he thought so. Isambard Kingdom Brunel, Britain's most famous engineer and builder of some of the greatest bridges, tunnels and ships in the world, including this, the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol, which spans over 700 feet. Fantastic! Now, this bridge, the Millennium Bridge, opened in 2000 and cost over 18 million smackaroos. Problem was that people started complaining it was unstable. Some even felt seasick, which led to it being rechristened the Wobbly Bridge. It all turned out OK because the designers went and fixed it. Don't you just love a happy ending? Brainy Brunel. Not so brainy, Millennium Bridge. Brain Jitsu! Tension and Brain Jitsu Dojo mounting! Now just four young hopeful remain to compete under watchful eye of Sheehan. Factual Frederick, sharp brain, make him strong contender. Meticulous Matthew. The training made me feel a little bit more prepared. I think it did really help. Concentrated Katie, first again in last challenge. And led back Hannah. Out of everyone, I think I was the most scared. Only two Bereni will make final test. Table of Supreme Focus, where must move ball with power of mind. Brain Jitsu Black Brain Belt is within the grasp. It's time for... Level 5. Red Belt! Now, if you're learning how to bull ride, then you might be interested to know that your new hobby is doing wonders for your old grey matter. Exercising both the thinking part of the brain, the cerebrum, and the doing part, the cerebellum. You see, doing new things increases the flow of blood into your head, which keeps your brain cells topped up with the oxygen they need to perform at their best. So, in level five, my brainies are gonna be challenged to learn new skills. Now, you can speed up how quickly the brain takes in new stuff. And this is what our brainies are gonna train for now. The room of mental nourishment. It's our brainies fourth visit to the room of mental nourishment. And for this brain training exercise, they're gonna be really working their brains by learning a new skill. Brain training. Juggle the two balls using one hand for as long as possible. Oh no, I've never been good at juggling and I never will be. Can anybody do this? It seems that all our brainies are struggling with this physical task, but this training has to be taxing so that the thinking part of your brain and the doing part of your brain are equally pushed. In order to have success, you have to control your mind to control your body. Or, as Meticulous Matthew explains it... This uses both coordination and the fact to concentrate on two things at the same time. 
Hey, good explanation, Matthew. Oh. But you must also remember not to get frustrated. Stay calm and focus on getting it right, not on getting it wrong. If this is going to help me in the task, I have no chance. You must stay positive, Katie. I can't do it. Well, look at any of us. <laughs> oh, training tip time. Have confidence. Compliment each other. Oh, you're all doing so great. And you, Hannah, and Matthew, and Fred. Oh. Do you not know how fake that sounds? Um, Katie, you're doing very well. I know. And so are you. Thank you. You're amazing, Fred. And so am I. I'm, all, I'm the most amazing of all of you. It doesn't seem that our brainies are taking the confidence boosting very seriously, but it really can help if you're learning something new. If you stay positive, tell yourself you can do it, you're much more likely to be successful at your new skill. I'm amazing, I'm brilliant and I will win. Everybody in this room is just so modest. You're We're very modest. modest. Concentrated Katie is right. Out of all our brainies, laid-back Hannah is the most modest. She's quietly getting on with the training while the others aren't really focusing. Confidence does help you because if you're all nervous, you don't really think. I got a bit too caught up in giving the compliments and I didn't sort of um, do much practice. So, laid back Hannah seemed to concentrate on the training more than the others. Will that help her with the next challenge? Katie seemed to struggle for the first time since she came to the door, Joel. Will this affect her performance? Time to find out, as our four now must put their training to the test. Mind Maze. To win Red Belt, Brainies must remain mentally confident as they learn new physical skill. Brainy must guide Marble to end of maze on their helmet by tilting head using the screen in front of them as guide. But there is twist. Image they are seeing is in reverse. That means, to go right, they must tilt left. What is more, Brainy is up against clock. Brainy with slowest time will be eliminated. The tip for my Brainies in this next task is to remain calm and think positive thoughts. Giving in to frustration will only lessen their focus and slow them up. Katie's first up. Katie really struggled in the training, even after the confidence-boosting tip. She still didn't seem that positive about her performance. Katie can't seem to get past go here. She's really struggling with the reverse nature of the mind maze. Oh, left is right, remember? But it looks like she's back on true, concentrated Katie form. She's calm and controlled and using her brain training to master this new skill. She's finished, and it's a good run. Now, factual Frederick. In the training, Frederick admitted that he wasn't much of a juggler, but can he master this new physical skill? Frederick looks like some kind of tortured mind maze genius. His face is showing a range of emotions, but he's still managing to control his body because he's finished already. Wow! Meticulous Matthew seems to understand the theory of the juggling training more than the others. And here, he looks like he's taking the mind maze slowly and surely. Matthew seems very focused. In fact, you can see him mouthing what he's thinking. His mind is totally concentrated on this physical skill. He's finished, and it's another fast run. Laid back Hannah has a lot to live up to. Hannah was quiet and concentrated in the training, and her calm nature seems to be paying off here. It's hard to imagine Hannah ever getting frustrated as she's more laid back than a sumo on a stretcher. And like the brainies before her, she's doing well. And she's done it. This group really were impressive, but who will be eliminated? Time for the results. Katie, 1 minute 21 seconds. Frederick, 28 seconds. Wow, that must be a brain jitsu record. Matthew, one minute, nine seconds. All these times are very impressive, but Katie's place in the dojo all hangs on Hannah's time. 
One minute and 15 seconds. So with just six seconds in it, Hannah is in. And it's a shocker, because concentrated Gaty is out. Walk of eternal regret. I'm feeling quite upset, but at the same time, I'm really pleased with myself that I've got this far. I find doing things backwards is really hard, and I couldn't get past the first step. I'd like to see Hannah win because she's the last girl, but I actually think that Matthew will, will win. So with only two levels left, Frederick, Matthew and Hannah stand proud in red. One of the reasons I think that I uh, did so well was that I find it very easy to focus on one particular thing as long as I've been given the instruction to focus on it. I'm quite annoyed that I didn't win. I'm really annoyed that Fred got 28 seconds. 28! Six are uh, bolt. It's this level which will decide which two of my remaining brainies will go on to battle it out for the black belt. Imagine you're performing a dance. As well as your moves to remember, there's the other dancer to think about and there's loads of people watching you. It's remembering things under pressure like this that level six is all about. It centres around three areas of the brain. The seeing part, the occipital lobes, the memory part, the temporal lobes, and the movement part, the cerebellum. To the max. The room of mental nourishment. With only three brainies remaining, this penultimate brain training challenge is all about improving your memory. Brain training. Memorise the train map. Uh, why don't we each do one track? So Hannah, so I do this one. Hannah does that one, and Matthew does that. So in this task, our three remaining red belt holders are exercising their occipital lobes, or seeing part of their brain, and their temporal lobes, their memory bank. But they've only got one minute to memorise the map. Oh, Matthew, stop. So I'll go first, then Hannah, and then Matthew. Is that fine with everybody? Yep. Go on. Right, everybody, close your eyes and. Brighton, Oxford, Re Reading, uh, Cardiff, Middlesbrough, uh, Carlisle, Carlisle, and Edinburgh. Um, guys, you kind of need to keep your eyes open so you can tell Frederick how well he did. OK, I missed out Belfast, but I think I got everything else right. It's your turn, Hannah. Go. London, Barnsley, um, War... Is it Warwick? Yep. Um, Walsley. Um... Um... Manchester and Glasgow. Uh, you missed out Br Bristol and you said Walsley, but apart from that, everything fine. Matthew, you go. Exeter, Taunton, Cambridge. Leicester, Nottingham, Stafford, Preston, and Newcastle. You got all of them right, well done. Yes. Hey, training tip time. Tip, split the task, memorise a train line each. Hey, that's what we did, we did, we did it already. Hey, we're geniuses, woo. I think it's going to be useful in the next task. So if we did it without even reading the tip, we're going to do quite well in the next task if we already figured that out. But if we all do, if we all do well, that means that we'll all Stare do off. well. Stare, Stare off. off. But I was the one that came up with the tip, so just maybe I will win. What do you think, Matthew? I think you're totally wrong. So, as Frederick second-guessed the tip, all three brainies didn't give themselves another practice. Will it affect their performance? Meticulous Matthew was the only one to get a full house, but Factual Frederick seems sure he'll do well. But will laid-back Hannah beat them both? There's only one way to find out, as our final three must now put their memory train into the test. Super Memory Dizzy Dance. Brainy is spin round and round on Dizzy Wheel. Total of ten time. Task is to use all power of focus to memorize five zoomed-in picture in front of them. 
then press against clock to cross balancing beam and collect full size version of same image from ten hanging above them. Then they must arrange in order that they have seen from the wheel. When Brainy is happy with selection, hit gong to stop clock. My tip for the Brainies is to keep focused on the main objective and use their training to link the five images together. So our final three brave the wheel to compete for their brown brain belt and for a chance to triumph over the table of supreme focus. Time to spin. Will the memory training help our brainies ignore the effects of the wheel and memorise the images? The order they are looking for is at the bottom of the screen. Frederick did pretty well in the training and he's picked the first four images very quickly, but he seems unsure of the fifth. Not only are our brainies under pressure as they race against the clock, but they have to fight the dizziness to collect the five full-size images of the zoomed-in pictures they've just seen. Then they must arrange them in the exact order they first appeared. Every image they get wrong means a five-second penalty. Frederick changed his mind about the sweet cone, but it's still in the wrong place. I wonder why he picked the pineapple. He's finished, but he don't look happy. Now, meticulous Matthew. Matthew was impressive in the training, and like Frederick, he's fast at picking the first images. He's gone for the pineapple too. Maybe him and Frederick are fans of Hawaiian pizza. Don't forget, this challenge decides which two brainies will go through to the final round. Matthew changed his mind about the saxophone, but now he's decisive and focused with the other four images. A final look back to check and he's gonged, but he doesn't look too pleased. <laughs> Laid back Hannah looks like she doesn't want to get off the wheel. The dizziness has really affected her. She can hardly stay upright. Hannah didn't really shine in the training and she looks pretty confused here. Anna seems to have forgotten she's up against the clock and is taking everything at her usual laid-back pace. Changing her mind about the vase, she's clearly not sure and the right order reveals she's as confused as she looks. But whose memory has cost them their place in the final? Time for the results. Frederick, 1 minute 7 seconds with 5 penalties, so it's 1.32 in total. Matthew, 1 minute 15 with 4 penalties, which means 1 minute 35 in total. So, his place in the dojo all hangs on Hannah's score. 2 minutes 10 seconds with 4 penalties, which is 2 minutes 30 in total. Matthew is in and Hannah is out. Best buddies, Factual Frederick and Meticulous Matthew couldn't be happier to be in the final. Walk of eternal regret. I'm disappointed that I didn't get to the final round, but I'm also happy that I was one of the last three. To do one last time, you need concentration and balance. So with only one level to go, it leaves just Frederick and Matthew to wear the brown brain belts in preparation for the final. I had this uncanny feeling I was going to lose, and I was really scared. Really, really scared. I'm so relieved that I'm at, that I'm finally at the final round. I'm really proud of where this headband. Brain Jitsu. Eight young hopeful arrived at Brain Training Dojo to fight for Brain Jitsu Black Brain Belt. As challenges get tougher, Brain E get fewer. Some just miss out. Others too slow. One by one, they have been eliminated. Still just two brainy remain. Meticulous Matthew. I'm also quite scared about the competition from Fred because I know him really well and I know that he's going to be difficult to beat. And factual Frederick. Matthew's my best friend and, and we both like science, so it'd be nice to see which is best. 
at that particular subject. But who will use brain training to the max to win final challenge? Brain T2! Level 7. Black Vault! So, this is it. Between my two remaining brainies and the Black Belt stands Brain Jitsu's ultimate challenge, a mental duel that is head-to-head -head in every sense. The battlefield? A table, but not just any table. For this, my friends, is the table of supreme focus, where our two brainies will attempt to move a ball across the table using only the power of their mind. By getting this far, they've already demonstrated mental control under many different types of pressure. But now, they must learn to focus their minds by entering a state of total calm. To prepare them, my two finalists will need to get into the zone. Room of mental nourishment. So, it's down to the last two. Brown brain belt holders Factual Frederick and Meticulous Matthew have one last chance to train their brains to win the black. In this final room of mental nourishment, they must bring together all the training they've received to achieve ultimate focus. Brain training. Mentally prepare yourself for the final task. Don't let the sounds put you off. Factual Frederick seems to be struggling to block out the noise. But Meticulous Matthew looks calm and scented. I found that actually quite easy because it, um, it actually, you know, it's just it's just like a little tick-tock kind of thing, you know. If it's like that in the main round, I'm dead. <sighs> but I want to win that black car out. I and nothing will stop me. What about our friendship? Training tip time. Tip. Visualise and focus on somewhere you feel happy and calm. He's going to be difficult to beat. 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 So it would be nice to see which is, which is best. 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 You should have focused on the tip. Did you think about a happy place? No, I thought about getting rid of the sound. My happy place, and it's a bit embarrassing, but I, I like to imagine myself on like a beach, you know, to be, you know, it just relaxes me. I'm going to build a sound fortress. You are slightly <laughs> messy <laughs> when, when it comes to this kind of thing. <laughs> so, Factual Frederick couldn't concentrate. Which best buddy will master the table of supreme focus and get the black belt? Let's find out. Dream focus. Rules are simple. Each brainy must push ball to the opponent's end of table using only power of mind. Sensors in brainy's headbands measure brain waves. This is converted into electrical signal which moves ball. More focused mind, stronger signal, and faster ball will travel. See how brainies are doing on this readout. Two lines represent each player's brain waves. Lower the line, more concentrated their mind. To make sure this is the test of all tests, our brainies must win the best of three rounds. So, this is the big one. If they are to succeed, our two finalists must use all their brain training to enter their zone of absolute focus. This is the reason they came to the dojo. This is the moment they've been training for. The Sheehan starts them off and the mind race is on. Both players' lines are evenly matched, but Factual Frederick is the first to move the ball. His green brainwave line is slightly lower than Matthew's. Frederick lost focus for just a second there and now Matthew has got control of the ball and is rolling it back to its starting position. But Frederick's got control again. These boys' lines are doing more crossing than a Japanese ferry. And the tables have turned once more and now the ball is picking up speed as meticulous Matthew moves it towards his opponent's end. His black brainwave line is now straight and low. Can Frederick regain control? Oh. 
So, it's round one to meticulous Matthew, and he looks very pleased. Can best buddy factual Frederick find his focus for round two? Matthew's first to move the ball this time. His black brainwave line is straight and low, showing his focused mind. Frederick looks like he's trying to focus on the ceiling, but Matthew's gaze is transfixed on the ball. Oh, that's it. It's all over. Meticulous Matthew has used his brain training brilliantly when it mattered the most. I'm really proud of myself. Well, I think my confidence level is, is, has improved throughout Brain Jitsu. Glory for one brings disappointment for another. Factual Frederick fought valiantly, but now he must leave the dojo. Sorry, Fred. What a gentleman. Walk of eternal regret. Every time I tried to blank my mind, my mind drifted. I lost, and it's a pity, but life goes on. So, Factual Frederick was pipped at the post by his best friend. But it's a triumph for meticulous Matthew. One of the most eloquent brainies we've seen in the dojo. Matthew learned from his training and improved throughout his time to master the table of supreme focus. Showing that he is indeed worthy to wear the Brain Jitsu Black Brain Belt. I think this has been a great experience for me because it's, I've gained something. More self-confidence and I think I'm going to do better in life now. If I could describe this experience in three words, best experience ever. Our journey has come to an end. Another brainy has proven themselves worthy to wear the Brain Jitsu black belt. But while Brain Jitsu might represent the most extreme form of brain training, its philosophy can be shared by all. Each and every one of you has it in your power to grow your mind. All it takes is dedication and practice. This has been... Brain Jitsu! Watch out for the Uglies! <laughs> Are they in your garden shed? Oogly's weekdays at 5.45 on the CBBC channel. and I like fixing things. I fixed computers, alarm clocks and my back gate. When we first moved into this house, my dad needed a lot of help um, fixing things. He taught me how to fit, use all the tools. I just got good at it. This is a spanner used for tightening nuts and bolts. The pliers are used for tightening things, gripping things and cutting wires. This is a pin hammer. I helped my dad fix the car by passing him tools and things like that. And I don't know a lot about cars, but my dad's teaching me about how to fix things inside the car. My dad tricked me when I was fixing the gate. Yeah, my dad was watching me just, just in case I hurt myself. He got some tomato ketchup and put it on his hand. And he went to the other side of the gate. I was putting the screw in with the drill. And my dad was pretending that I hurt him. And I thought he went right through and cut my dad's hand. And he didn't cut his head, but I thought he did. And, there was, and the smart kitchen looked like blood. It was really horrible. I like fixing computers. I hate school. I fixed my nan's computer because she needed most of her files in a one folder. I think I'm the best at computers in my family. I've got two sisters who are very annoyed and break nearly everything. Most of the things inside the house. And they break the gate by swinging on it. Even if I do fix something for them, um, they never say thank you. Which is really annoying and I don't feel like I'm going to fix things ever, ever again for them. My name is Joshua and I like fixing things. 
likes you. Do you want to be part of the action? Then come along to the See Me on CBBC tour. You could start with a virtual Danny Harmer and Tracy Beaker, act out a scene from Sarah Jane Adventures, or even be a lab rat in Richard Hammond's Blast Lab. We'll be in Manchester on the 29th and 30th of August at the Trafford Centre. Check out our website for all the details and be part of something amazing. Come on, Darren. Let me just do the hello and welcome. Leave